In the last video, we looked at using shapes, uh, which is a fundamental part of working in Illustrator. In this video, I want to show you how you can use your shapes and then how you can edit them down to get the best results that you'll need whenever you're building logos in particular. So what I'm going to do first uh, to demonstrate this is just to take the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw out an ellipse, something about like that. I'm going to give it a fill and I'm going to remove the stroke. It's important to remove the stroke and I'll explain why uh, a little bit further into this video. But I'm going to remove the stroke so that I just have this ellipse. I don't really care too much about the color. I'm doing this just for purposes of demonstration. The tool that we're going to be looking at is called the Pathfinder. Typically this is not up on your functions on the right by default. You have to actually place it there. You do that by going up to Window and it lists out all of your available functions that you can use. So I'm going to find the one that says Pathfinder and open it up. It's going to give me this small window. I can move it around wherever I want. I can dock it over here on the side. Whatever I want to do. Uh, I think I'm actually going to float it out here a little bit and use it. Uh, but pretty much all the, there's a lot of different buttons here. There's a lot of different options. All we're really looking at right now are two buttons up here on the top, which is Unite and Minus Front. And I'll show you what those do. Now essentially what this does is it allows me to cut pieces off of shapes and also to merge pieces of shapes together. Now I could do this with the eraser, but the eraser is kind of a clunky tool for this kind of thing. It doesn't really give you clean edges when you need them. Uh, it's much easier to just do this with the Pathfinder. So what this takes is actually an additional shape. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to demonstrate the first time. I'm going to go up and grab my rectangle tool now and I'll change the color just so you can see the difference between them. And I'm going to drag out a rectangle that covers all of the bottom of this oval. Now when I drag that out, I'll take a minute to arrange it to get it where I want it. <coughs> and I have these two shapes. This one's obviously stacked on top. This red rectangle is my cutting shape. This green oval is what I intend to cut with it. If I look up here to the second button, it's called minus front, and essentially what that means is that if I select these two shapes, it's going to subtract the higher up shape from the one below it. It's easiest just to demonstrate by hitting the button and seeing the cut. Everything that was covered by the red rectangle was cut through, and as a consequence, the red rectangle is now missing. Now you can do that in any way that you want to using any shape that you want to as long as it is a fill of some kind I'm hitting buttons now that I shouldn't be hitting as long as it is a fill of some kind uh, it will accomplish the same goal you just have to make sure to select both by clicking and dragging over them or by holding shift and clicking them one at a time minus front to cut a hole now I'm going to show you why it has to be a fill and why I removed the stroke in the beginning. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool again and drag out a perfect square here by holding shift and clicking and dragging out. And then I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to put the stroke on it. Now I kind of gave this away a little bit in the last video when I was showing how what happens when you try to erase a stroke. Uh, and this one has kind of the same effect. It doesn't really work correctly. So if I have this and I want to cut, say, a piece out of the bottom, I'll go ahead and pull one of those out here, an additional cutting rectangle. And I'll go through the same process I did with the circle and do minus front. You notice it cuts a piece out of the, the path itself, but since the stroke, by definition, covers the outlying edges of the shape, all I've done is alter the, the shape of this fill. So that's not doing what I want it to. I'm going to hit Command Z and go back. What you actually have to do, and it's fairly easy to tell this, if I zoom in closely you can see that the blue line that indicates the path itself runs in the middle of the stroke. If I select something that is a fill, you can see that the blue lines that indicate the bounding edges run along the exact edge. That's how you tell the difference visually between the two but you're going to run into situations where you need to take an outside stroke like this and cut pieces out of it. The easiest way to do that is just to convert it over to a fill instead of a stroke. If I go up to object in the top menu and then path, there's an option that says outline stroke. If I do that, 
you'll notice that the lines suddenly switch from the middle of the stroke to the outside edges because this is now a fill. It is no longer a stroke, it is a fill. So now I can select these two as I did before and I can use that and cut a piece out of the bottom. You will want to watch that back a couple of times. You'll want to make sure that you remember how to do that, how to access the menu and make that happen because it's going to come in very useful to you as you move through the course and also a lot of students have difficulty remembering that bit so that's one reason why I'm creating a permanent record here so that you can go back and see how that was handled now with these two I, my idea here is that I'm going to merge them together I'm gonna to make them a single piece there's a couple of ways to do that I'm gonna show you how to do it with the Pathfinder but I'm also gonna show you the temporary version if I select them both and go up to object and group these will move as one. I can click and move them around as a single piece. However, it's temporary because I can always go up and do object ungroup and then I can move them by themselves again. If you really want the change to be permanent, and by the way you only do this after you're perfectly happy with each piece before you bring them together, you select them both and use the first button of the Pathfinder which is Unite. If I click that these are now a single piece that cannot be separated. It is in essence now just a complete shape whereas if you group them its illustrator handles it as though they are two shapes that are grouped rather than just a single solid shape. To keep it simple try to keep things to basic shapes otherwise you may find yourself clicking through group after group after group which limits what you're able to do to them. For example you cannot use the Pathfinder effect that I just showed you on a group you cannot cut pieces out of the group they have to be separate first or you have to unite them as you see that I've done with this one so the, this is the basic difference between it I often define it as when you group things together it's like they become good friends but when you merge them together when you use the unite function of the pathfinder it literally and eerily makes them the same entity